Hi, and welcome to Configmus Day 12, our month-long user group party. I'm Amy. And I'm Johan. We still have Kylo in the studio with us as well. Yesterday, we talked about our favorite features that we saw in 1902, and we've already talked about in another video our favorite features from 1910. And to wrap it all up and our favorite changes that Config Manager has seen this year, we're going to be talking about 1906. Indeed, indeed. So one, uh, not feature per se, but a bit of a warning yeah. again. Uh, the client in 1906 now requires SHA-2 code. So if you have all the platforms, Windows 7, 2008 or 2, uh, please don't. But if you still do, make sure they are fairly updated. Otherwise, the client won't work or install on those machines. Now, another really nice feature is the standalone version of CM Pivot. So CM Pivot has been around for now for a few versions in Config Manager. It's real-time questions that you send to your clients, but you can actually, if you go into the installation directory, that's uh, here on my eDrive, Program Files, Config Manager, Tools. Here is the standalone version of CM Pivot, so you don't need to have the console as a sort of a base to start it. You can just open it from there. So that's kind of nice. Yeah. So speaking of kind of nice, if you look in my console, I have 423 sample applications. Yes, <laughs> as you do. I have a few more in another folder and also at the top level. But um, something that I like to do as an admin at the end of the year is kind of take a look at what I have and see if stuff needs to be cleaned up. So um, starting in 1906, and you can you could have used this feature over the summer or you can start using it now. You can go through your applications and find out what test, what test sequence they're used in. All you do is pull up an application and then in the details pane, there's a little box that says test sequences or tab, I'm sorry. You click on the tab and it returns all of the test sequences that an application is in. So this is good if you aren't sure if you're deploying an application in a sequence or you're not sure if you're actually still using the application. Sometimes I'll forget that, hey, this application that like nobody uses, it turns out we're actually deploying it to some pretty specialized computer. So I want to make sure that I keep the application and the sequence around. So it's good for checking things. Yes. All right. Two kind of related features. We will have a dedicated session later on for Doink, the new cache server in uh, Config Manager. Mm -hmm. and. As we mentioned in one of the previous sessions, it even has a new name now. It's called Microsoft Connected Cache. Okay. But 1906 was actually the first version it came. So that was kind of nice. And with that, also in the monitoring node, when you are looking at the uh, sort of history on distribution status and client data sources, uh, you will eventually see uh, uh, DO content there as well. Uh, why did I go to this server when I have my stuff on this server? Here we go. Monitoring. Distribution. Here we go. Here's where you can see the new deal stuff. And as time goes by, we will see more and more content in Config Manager being delivered by this protocol or this peer-to-peer -peer technology. So being able to see that now is kind of nice. Super shiny. Yes. So back in my console, I'm in the um, in devices, and I've clicked on a device. And often I have wondered to myself, self, I wonder what device collection this device is actually in. So if I grab a device and then go back to the, de the details pane, there's a tab called Collections now, which is super great. So you click on that tab, and I can see, first of all, what collections uh, device is in, which is great. But I could also see um, pretty easily if I'm doing um, like redundant assignment. Too many collections, things like that. As you can see with this device, um, I can clean it up. Yep. Or I, I could say, hey, you know, if I'm thinking about deploying this to, so you can see the currently logged in user is Hal, if I'm going to deploy something or take some sort of action on it, then I know who I need to notify or I'll know, hey, actually, Hal is just accounting because Hal is really good at eating money. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Cool. Anyway. Okay. Um, there is a new log reader in town. 
It's called um, Support Center One Trace. So in Config Manager, since back in probably 1810, Microsoft now includes um, the Support Center tool, which used to be a separate download. Um, and before that, it was an internal tool. But this one includes the uh, One Trace uh, view, and that one has things like tab views, dockable windows. Uh, you can save your filters mm -hmm. for later. So uh, and just some some shortcuts to to look up error codes and stuff like that. So um, it's really fast in loading large files. So if you have that twenty megabyte log file that's in trace kind of chokes and dies on, this one is much quicker to load it. So that's mm -hmm. that's good news. Um, another one of my favorite was something we touched on in our 1910 session a bit, but 1906 is actually when the sequence debugger came, the okay. ability yeah. to step mm -hmm. through the actions in the sequence. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. So do you remember earlier this year when we all flew to Amsterdam and I spoke at uh, Microsoft Ignite the Tour in Amsterdam? I remember that because that was vacation for me. It was, was vacation great. for you. <laughs> it was speaking time for me and it did not go well. But if you remember, we were sitting in the mechanics studio and Brad Anderson was there and he announced that if you were still going to be running Windows 7 in your environment, that you had better start using Windows Virtual Desktop. Mm -hmm. So I won't cover that announcement, but what's interesting starting with 1906 is that if you are using Windows Virtual Desktop, and that version of Windows allows multiple user sessions, mm -hmm. and you have the Config Manager agent deployed to it, which yeah. is supported. Any user actions that you have targeted to those devices will be disabled. OK, I had no the, idea. The, yeah, because multiple users being logged in, and you're trying to do something to Hal's computer when Hal, Amy, and Louie are all logged in, that might be bad. So um, even if you go in and try and enable it, the, the Config Manager client app will be like, no, no. and disable it itself. So pretty cool if you're going to start using Windows Virtual Desktop that you can manage um, that environment with Config Manager and take actions on the device like you would expect to be able to with anything else that a user would log into. All right. Um, one shiny thing was the ability to pre-cache not just in-place upgrade packages, but also now uh, driver packages, OS images, and regular legacy packages as part of that little uh, mm -hmm. option there. Now, that's not the only way to pre-stage stuff, but it's nice that they added the ability to do that. And then, of course, my absolute, the best thing that happened to WSUS since, I don't know, a long, long time. But if you go to site management, find your uh, sub, and you have a new or fairly new uh, maintenance tab where you can now add in the non-clustered index to the database. And why, you ask? Well, it improves the performance by like 30 times. Uh, I remember working last year cleaning out the database with like 10,000 obsolete updates from a customer, and it took 45 hours to get them deleted. I remember this because that was over a weekend. Yes. And I remember how, how thrilled you were. Yes. Over I that. love you, customer. But, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. So that's good. So all these options now available, supported, done, perfect. Good stuff. Yeah. Yes. So I know that Peer Cache doesn't get a lot Never of heard love. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> there are actually valid scenarios to use Peer Cache. Yeah. So I think first of all, I want to go on the record saying that that it's. There yeah. are valid scenarios. Um, there are organizations that do actively block multicast yes. um, on the routers, and that is a 100% requirement for a branch cache. Yeah. And I think then customers are like, oh, well, then I can't use peer-to-peer -peer at all, or I have to go third party. And I'm not here to tell you what to use. I'm telling you about peer cache yes. right now that um, starting in 1906, you can set an an, an expiration policy. And what I mean by that is if you have deployed something that has filled a super peer's cache, you can now set the threshold. And I will uh, show you where it is. It's in client settings for um, client cache settings. <clears throat> so you can set the minimum duration that a client can remove um, cache content in minutes. So what that means is this computer is a super peer and He's downloading content and the cache is filled, but this one is also super peer and also wants to download from friend, peer number yeah. one, yeah, from, from a friend. Um, I'm going to say you have to wait 30 minutes before you can purge it to allow your computer 
to catch up. Yep. Which is really great because if if you're not done downloading and I purge the cache, then what are you going to do? Exactly. Good stuff. Yeah, very shiny. So that's it from me. Do you have anything else? No, I'm good for now. Awesome. Well, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye for now. Bye.